Hello, I'm Mark Paul Smith. I'm the author of a book called The Reporter, which is due out in November of 2021 to be published by BQB Publishing. It takes place in the 70s in a small Midwestern newspaper, and it's about a young man who starts as an obit writer and then gradually rises through the ranks, starts covering cops, then he gets to social services and schools. This gruff city editor tells our young neophyte reporter, his favorite saying is, every story is like a pancake. It has two sides and you can't eat one without the other. Takes a big drag on his camel cigarette, <coughs> chokes and on we go. So the reading is from our protagonist's first day covering cops. And it's from a chapter entitled Front Page News because on his first day covering cops, there's this massive bank robbery. So here it is, the reporter. Squad cars surrounded the bank with screaming sirens and flashing lights. Two mass robbers had fled on foot. A manhunt was underway as Jesse followed his detective into the bank. People were standing around, frozen in place, still in shock. A middle-aged female teller staggered from behind the counters with blood gushing from her right upper arm. She'd been shot by one of the robbers along with a male customer who lay slumped in a pool of his own blood on the floor in front of the main counter. The wounded female teller lurched around several police officers and headed straight for Jesse with outstretched arms. He watched her coming and, and wondered what he'd done to attract her attention. At first he thought she might be a friend of his mother, but the closer she got, the more he realized he'd never seen the woman before. She stumbled as she got within reach and fell into his arms, spurting blood all over him. Jesse laid her down as gently as he could and put his hand over the gunshot wound to apply pressure. She was gasping for breath as she looked into his eyes. I, I told him he couldn't have the money. I, I, I told him, no, this is all my fault. I should have just given him the money. He wouldn't have started shooting if I'd just given him the money. The woman strained her neck to look at her wounded customer who was motionless, but still clutching his wallet in his right hand. Is he dead? Can't you see? Is he gone? Oh, please, God, tell me he's not dead. He's going to be fine, Jesse said, not knowing if it was true. What did the guy who shot you look like? He was wearing a mask over his nose and mouth. I could see his eyes. They were evil. It looked like he came from hell. He was young. He was a white guy. He was high on something. He was jumpy and angry. And then he started shooting when I wouldn't give him the money. She closed her eyes and started to sob. I saw the fire come out of the gun. Am I going to die? My whole left side is going numb. Oh, why? Why didn't I just give him the money? Jesse kept one hand over the gunshot wound and stroked her head with the other. You're going to make it. Look, here come the paramedics. Jesse looked like a victim himself as the paramedics rushed into the bank. They told him to lie down on the floor while they took over treating the woman. She moaned incoherently before passing out. Jesse watched to make sure she was still breathing as they loaded her onto a stretcher and hauled her out to an ambulance in front of the glass doors of the bank. The wounded customer looked like he might regain consciousness as medics began treating him. Jesse thought he saw him move the hand that still clutched his wallet. The robbers must have been in a panic not to grab it. A female medic turned her attention to Jesse. It took some talking, but Jesse convinced her he was a newspaper reporter and that the blood all over his shirt was not his own. As he stood up to demonstrate he wasn't injured, he saw his fellow reporter Chuck Macy running toward him. Macy arrived out of breath and looked like he might pass out from looking at all the blood all over Jesse and puddling on the floor. Weatherly sent me over to help with the story. It looks like you could use a little. <laughs> so that was Jesse's first day on the job. And what, what the reader will find is this book reads like, like an action adventure because that is the life of a reporter. Jesse, as he rises in the ranks, falls in love with an exotic dancer, uh, a black young woman named Brown Sugar. So that's a parallel story as... The two begin dating and uh, interracial dating, not too popular in this small Midwestern town. And the parallel story, as he's rising in the ranks, 
also his rock and roll career is starting to take off. He's writing songs, playing in bands, and he's torn between whether or not to be a musician or a reporter. That is the story of The Reporter. I hope you read it. I hope you enjoy it. And thank you to BQB Publishing.